Hello folks, this video is about my journey into surface mounted soldering. I follow Paul Carlson from Mr. Carlson's Lab on YouTube and he's got these wonderful bits of test equipment and if you follow him on Patreon you can get the circuit diagram and the whole thing to make them yourself. So I've made these and just to show you that my soldering does work, they, the devices work perfectly. So it's not my day job, it's Paul Carlson's day job and that's where it gets quite intimidating. How, how can you possibly achieve you know, this minor electronics god level of workmanship. If you'd like to stick around for a bit, I think I can show you the, the tools and some of the practices that I've discovered that uh, makes the job successful. It's taken a while for me to figure these things out, but uh, now, you know, there's all the tools that I use, very, very important. And the star of the show, yes, these guys. That thing on the left is so cheap c compared to its value and the thing on the right is not necessary but uh, I love having a desoldered too. Mini drill press, excellent for drilling printed circuit boards, holds those lovely little miniature drills perfectly. There's no run out, it just drills a lovely straight line. Yep, box of drills, cheap as you like, all different sizes, enough sizes there to do your PCBs, um, all, all aspects. Mr Octopus. For obvious reasons another circuit board holder yeah these close cutters very important they all cut right to the nail absolutely flat as you like and very very sharp the next ones coming up those ones on the left forget it they don't cut close enough to, for the component leads scotch bright and wet and dry lead free on the left lead on the right i don't like lead free solar for surface mounted work it dries dull Magnifying glass and off-the-shelf uh, reading glasses. These are 3.5s, which suit me fine. These are ceramic tip tweezers, which I prefer. Mr. Carlson's lab, he uses uh, metal ones and he uses them as a heat sink. I don't tend to linger very long with the iron, so I don't require the metal. Good old wire strippers, automatic and manual. This is gold on the bench. This little bottle with the pipettes delivers the RA flux in very small quantities, which is essential for surface mounting. Those tips, I tend to use the conicals only and the bevel now and again, uh, the knife and the chisel, I just it's not my scene so I don't use them. Alcohol and thinners for cleaning up and the rosin flux, that's RA flux which is activated flux uh, so that means you definitely got to clean it off. Finally let's get on with some action, so tinning the iron is the first thing. So if you're new to it this is where you got to learn and get absolutely spot on. So give it a load of solder if you put too much on just give a wicked into that gorse it's soft metal so it won't damage the tip and then in that damp sponge do a twisting action sort of drag twist and drag it towards you so it's a wiping off the excess practice that as many times as you can to get it perfect because you will be doing it an awful lot can't emphasize that enough and you should end up with a tip that's nice and shiny like that. Uh, that's about as good as it gets, I think. Next trick to learn, hot swapping. Now you'll be changing tips quite often if you're doing surface mount. So I'm just swapping from a 1.5 mil conical to I think a 0.4 millimeter conical. So you just unscrew it with your long nose. Take the sleeve up and then if the tip's stuck, tap it the tip on the plastic bit of the soldering iron, not on the metal of course, otherwise you'd damage the tip. Stick the element back in and you can get a, be a dab hand at this, it doesn't take long to learn and it's very useful, otherwise you, won't, you can't be waiting for the iron to cool down, that's just not practical. It doesn't harm the iron at all as long as you do it quickly. Okay, time to clean the board, very important, got to get rid of oxidization, it's uh, your enemy. Even though the flux is good, it's not perfect. So a clean board is a good thing. I'm going to finish it off with some alcohol or thinners. It's your, your call. So I'm using 1.5 millimeter conical. That's my go-to tip at 375. So this is tantalum capacitor, drop of RA flux, you can see. And look at my shaking hands. And that's just the right amount of solder I used there. Ceramic tips. You could use metal tweezers if you want. It's your call. Paul Carlson uses metal tweezers. He uses them as a heat sink um, on his components, which is a great idea. 
Now, this is lead solder, so you can see how shiny that is. The, th the beautiful thing about lead solder, you cannot mistake the fact that it's a good joint because it just shines. If it's a bad joint, it'll be dull. Load the tip again. I have to swap hands here. Push down again. Not quite, a bit more. Boom. And you can almost hear it suck underneath the under the leg. It's, it's a wonderful experience to watch. And that's nice and shiny. So you, you, you know once the rosin's cleaned off, um, there's your nice little joint. So this is 1.5 conical again, 375 degrees always usually for, with me. At 375 degrees, you don't have to linger. It it does the it does the heating really quickly. So that's my style. That's what I've developed. I prefer the iron quite quite hot, so I don't have to hang around too long. Solder all small components on first. Leave the big ones like the potentiometer till last. That means you've done the bulk of the rosin or the flux cleaning beforehand. You don't want lots and lots of liquid flying around your potentiometer if it gets inside. As you can imagine, a bit of thin as isopropyl and rosin, it will knacker it. So I'll swap the tip out now to a 0.4, which when you touch it with your finger, it feels like a, almost like a needle. So this is the dreaded 0603s, and you can hardly see the blooming things. Never mind solder them. Look at my shaking hands. So I'm doing this in a, in a PCB holder. You, really, you should be doing this flat on a mat so you could rest your wrist, but I couldn't do that with the camera work. So now hold your breath. You'll find yourself holding your breath quite a lot. It's good practice actually. That turned out okay. Charge the tip again. Now this is the bit that takes practice, it's just how much, and that looks like I hardly put anything on, but it was that's completely sufficient. Now Paul Carlson, as I said, uses metal tweezers here, and it's good as a heat sink. But for, for me, I like the ceramic ones, they, they don't act like heat sinks at all, uh, of course. Uh, but I don't linger very long with the tip, so I'm not that worried about the heat. And there's a close-up. I bought half a dozen boards off eBay, and once I etched them, I didn't really see it uh, at the time, but the, the boards, the copper's pot-marked. I mean, I don't know what happened to them, but they're all the whole batch was bad, both single and double-sided. I recommend going to a reputable source. This uh, greeny, yellowy... A uh, drill bit is perfect size for LEDs. Gives you just a nice little bit of grip so that the legs don't flop about. Goes in like a treat. And this, as you can see, very nice. Swap the bit over now for the orangey beigey bit. This is good for potentiometers, cable connectors in wires. And again, it blasts through the material like it's not there. I recommend putting a soft wooden block behind, like you can see, I'm using pine. And a full support. You need full support for the circuit board. Just don't sort of span it between two small things. This way the board doesn't slip around and you won't snap your drill bit. And there's the result. Tight-fitting legs. Here's an experiment. So this is these are big cable connectors on a on a duff um, circuit board i just wanted to show you how lovely that the lead solder flows and and the indicator of how shiny it is so in each one of those you can see the joints just spot on and at 375 degrees with that conical 1.5 tip it does a lovely job even with a big leg like that now just for argument's sake i'm just putting some ra flux on in a sec now I want to show you that there's absolutely no point in doing this. There's enough flux in this cord solder in the weller that I use to do a perfectly good job. You'll see now that actually the flux uh, is a bit of an irritant. It's cooling the joint down ever so slightly, so I have to linger a bit longer. And as you can see, it's kind of bubbling around and uh, on a clean joints like that, you, you just don't need the, the um, flux extra flux and it's only, only more to clean off as you can see look at the puddles of flux left behind and then that joint there that looks rubbish 
they're all very nice and shiny but now you've got to get rid of that flux now we're using lead free here just wanted to show you the difference and you can see that each one of these joins will be dull so you really can't tell it's you relying on a sixth sense and your eyesight to say that um, the, the joint is correct which is kind of what you need to do with any joint anyway but the lovely thing about lead solder it just gives you that shiny finish as a like a reward it says yep it's a good joint but this each one of these is dull obviously there's lots of good reasons why you should be using lead free uh, but if it's if it's you know if it's not your day job because that, that's a bad one uh, if, if it's not your day job then the small amount that you'll be using with lead it's not you don't you probably won't need an extractor just good ventilation so here I've got two rows the back row is all lovely lead and the front row is lead free I actually tested these electrically and they're all perfect joints but the front row to me just looks like cold solder now I'm going to have a bit of fun geez I love desoldering honestly it's a bit of a fetish you can just go around a whole board and suck the lead out or lead free in this case the, the desoldering stations tend to be more expensive than the soldering station but uh, I'll leave some links below um, to, to that my two I think are out of date now but I'll leave some links below to their their perfect equivalents you don't have to buy the top of the range stuff to, to, um, to get perfect results so this is some lead free uh, just a resistor and a little switch and Bob's your what's it it sucks it straight through no problem no RA flux required I feel very confident with lead free doing on work like this but I'll never I'll never use it for surface mount as the writing says do not join wire like this solder doesn't have any tensile strength that join will break under load whereas if you twist it you get the mechanical strength and it will never come undone it's as strong as the wire itself So if you don't linger too long, you don't burn your um, sleeving. Now this guy is what I use for um, maybe automotive or boat work or just bigger wires basically. The RA flux helps. If you linger too long and heat the wire up too long, that flux can actually whip down below the insulation. And if you're doing this on copper stranded wire without the tinning like in this case, uh, that RA flux can go down inside the insulation and it will turn it green and corrode because just the very nature of flux well I hope you found that useful if you did please give it the old thumbs up and maybe subscribe you know, so you'll be the first to see what other things I'm going to get up to anyway those two um, pieces of equipment at the front of the video from Mr. Carlson's lab, I made the mistake of making both those circuits with lead-free solder. So now I look inside and it's just, um, it's not as shiny as or aesthetically pleasing as it could be. So this component that we're zooming in on now, that's done with lead-free. And uh, it just looks like a cold solder joint. So the, as far as reflection is concerned, I, I'll use leaded solder all day long. All right, see you next time.